Hello everybody, c again and today we'll be doing an inscription guide on Act 2. Now, as far as I understand, most of the people got put off when they saw Act 2 or when they played Act 2, so I decided to do a guide on it to showcase how you can quickly create an overpowered deck and blast through it. Uh, I will start with um, the bones deck, but you can start with whatever deck you want. Um, the only reason I'm starting with the bone deck is because the, the zero cost units do damage and also because I'm gonna go to the blood area and blood actually combos with the bones. And I will also not go to the bottom area, by the way. You want to get some... Oh, we got something nice here. Uh, you want to get... Um, what's it called? Mantis Gods from those packs, but if you don't get Mantis God, it's not really uh, the end of the world. Let's continue here. This is the solution. I have a video on why this solution and how to do... Oh, we got some wolf cubs. We are lucky. And I got another ship. It's really good. And another wolf cub. I didn't get a single uh, Mantis God, though. The code here is 273. Really easy. It's outside the cabin. I'm gonna show you where this code is. And um, as I was saying, the reason I go with the bone deck is because uh, the zero cost units are do one damage at least. The same goes for the mage deck, by the way, but the mage deck um, can break a lot of times. A lot of times you lose runs just because you don't draw some stuff. Here's the code, the 273 code. And also bone units combine well with blood units. I had I don't have the blood deck because uh, it has squirrels in it. So those are zero ones that don't do anything. Whoop, I forgot to create a deck. Yep, let's go with the wolf cubs, as I said. And um, this is a 2-3. And uh, actually, 2-3 is decent right now. Let's go with all of those because it's a one dam free damage. Let's go with some of those. Let's go those. Let's get two ships. Let's get one more of those. And uh, should I play these? I mean, it's a two cost 3-3. Three, three, uh, one one. Uh, nah, let's let's do a trade here. One less grave digger. Because the grave digger, or the grave diggers, although they're good, they might break our hand and we might not be able to play any of them. Marvelous, you chose me, blah blah blah. We go attack, attack, we do two damage, those break right away. That's how they work. We hide the gravedigger behind. That's the reason why I didn't want to go a thousand gravediggers. Because as I said, they might brick. Now you will see I'm throwing them under the bus. Um, you come over. I don't want to play anything actually. Because I want this gravedigger to die. Because I want the dog to actually chase down. I want this to start moving slowly. And uh, now play this and let the dog chase it down. Now we play. The dog will chase down whatever that thing spawns. So we are pretty safe on that front. We go here. We block the wolf in. We pass. Now this will move left and right, left and right. Even if we don't block the wolf in, it doesn't matter. Because when this dies, it spawns a 1-1. And uh, now what I can do is actually sacrifice this to bring my own wolf in, which is a lot better. As you see, the ship is really good for this particular fight. And there's a 3-2. Uh, and now we should be winning. Thank you. Uh, you will need money for this build, but uh, there is later a farm spot where you can get the money from another wolf cub. Insane. Let's throw the wolf cub into the mix. Throw the raven out. I don't like I don't like the raven. And let's continue with this real quick. Auto shoot here. As you saw, there is a very high chance that you break your hand there and will not be able to play anything. Just because of the fact that you have some zero attack skeletons in there. But if you're even a bit lucky, uh, you should be able to do this. And you have infinite tries, so even if you lose a run here or there, um, you can still win after a while. So... Yeah, here we're gonna start right away with playing this here. Sacrificing it, play the wolf as far away as possible, play this here, throw this under the bus, and let's go. We just did two damage and another three from the welding wolf, and we should be winning. Uh, we cannot play this, but it doesn't matter. The grave. You should always, always, always play the grave digger, by the way, because it costs one, uh, one bone, and he gives you the bone at the end of your turn so the moment you play him you will get the bone back and then after he dies he will create another bone so at minimum he will give you two bones for one at minimum and also block 
and at maximum he might give you infinite here by the way the hair the um, this thing is always as far away from you as possible so and the game doesn't pause while you open packs so right now the hair is jumping down there and most likely is in the trap this is a nice one two cost three one flying uh, we get some grizzlies, but we can't really play them, but this is good for us. Two mana, one, one flying. I mean, we are full on aggro. Normally, I don't like flyers, but in this particular deck, they're not that bad. Uh, let's throw one grave digger out. And, uh, let's also throw one rogue out. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I don't really need the grave diggers that much because of the fact that... You know, when units die, you get bones, so I don't need infinite bone creation. And um, off we go to this fight. Let's hope we won't break our hand again. I'm keeping the skeletons in the deck because they're the only zero cost unit I have right now. Uh, it's a frog, it's a thing. Let's go here. I mean, this is gonna die at the end of the turn, so it doesn't matter where I play it. Okay. We got a really bad hand here. Yeah, that, that, those are hands that you pretty much lose almost instantly when you get them. Ah, classic. Uh, okay, we got some time. So right now I'm doing 3 damage and they are doing 3 damage. And we can stay here forever, so I got a good balance going. So I'm gonna just start drawing cards until I'm about uh, at 6 or 7 cards deep. And then I will start playing things. Because I don't find any reason to risk anything. There is even a flyer coming in, so I'm not gonna risk at all. Okay, we're gonna throw this under the bus to start destroying this slowly. Okay. Now, uh, this will get to damage. Let's, let's play this. Sack it. Okay. Now this will evolve and kill this. And from here on out, I should be out DPSing them slowly. Might as well throw this into the mix. I know that this just jumped, but it doesn't matter at all. Now I start blocking every turn here and there, here and there. This will move over and block here. Now this will move over and block there again. And at this point we won. I could have played it differently, but it doesn't matter. It, it, it doesn't matter at all how fast or slow you play these fights. I just want to showcase that there are a bunch of ways you can win, even slow wins, even fast wins. And we got trash, man, we're only getting trash today. Uh, this here in particular, although it's a bad card, is gonna be good against Leshy. So we're gonna play it and get it into our deck. And if I can get another, another lockdown, let's throw the zombie away. If I can get another lockdown on the field, I, yeah, I will use it, obviously. Now how this Leshy fight works is uh, the first thing that will die on your field will uh, give the cost to the cards that Leshy will give you. Leshy will give you some cards at the... First of all, let me think here for a second, sorry. I think I want to play the, uh, the, the wolf over here and uh, the skeleton on the left. Actually, I don't need the skeleton, I can play the dragger on the left. Yeah, let's, let's play this here, play the wolf on the right and play this on the left. Now this will die, and it will give us a free. Um, it will give us that everything that Lesh is going to give us will cost one bone. One bone is a really cheap thing. I could have tried for a three bone thing for a free, a completely free card, but um, yeah, well, I didn't. <laughs> uh, right now, I will do three to him, so this is a good turn to just amass some bones. You know what? Forget it. I'm not gonna do that. This died. Now this is gonna copy the stats, so the, the card he's gonna give us is going to be a 1-1. And the next thing that dies will uh, will copy its ability to the units so he's gonna give us, so we definitely don't want to copy the bones. So I'm gonna throw this over here and hope that one of those two dies next. I'm not gonna play these because, as I said, they will uh, give their ability to the unit that he's gonna give us. And now he throws all our cards away, which is pretty bad. But uh, he just gives us a one bone unit that, as you see, has no abilities because it didn't get an ability. Uh, also, a grizzly is coming in, which is pretty bad. But um, it doesn't really matter because I can just play those here and here. And uh, now this will move around and at some point die. And when that point arrives, we will be able to most likely win. So I will continue tanking here. This dies over there. He takes three. This dies, this dies, 
Throw this under the bus over here. This uh, this this here is in the deck just to kill this, but uh, I'm obviously not gonna play it because we're gonna lose. So we play this here, and at this point we should be winning. And that's the Leshy fight. And uh, now the easy part comes because this was quote unquote the hard part. So now we won. And uh, yeah, at this point we are pretty much almost done. I mean we're not done, but you, you will see. You will see. Now uh, the, now we're gonna go into the high gear. It gives us a deck, uh, a card. We still have not gotten a single uh, Mantis God. Still not a Mantis God. We got this card though, which is one of the cards that we will need for this build. So, so it's something. I'm not gonna put it into the deck, by the way. But it is part of the cards you will need to start the infinite. I mean, you don't need it per se, but it's gonna help out. Can I move? I guess I can move now. You can also do other things, tidbits here and there. Give me a sec. First of all, come over here and pick this thing up because it's going to be a reroll and mulligan. On the start of the fight, you can change your hand. And also, let's not forget the tentacle that will appear here, which will give you later a collectible card. I don't need to go over here. You can go over here and pick up cards for free and over here too. There are a bunch of uh, decks, uh, a bunch of packs you can pick up from here and there. But uh, they don't matter at the grand scheme of things because we are very close to the end of this. So you read this, it's, um, it's bone, fly, bone. So we go here and here. Now this is the first fight. We talk to this guy. To this guy. As far as I know, this is a very, very easy fight. The only thing you have to do is break this thing because these guys have as much damage uh, as many of those are on the field. So right now these are 1-2s and if I break this they have 0-2s. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the only thing you have to do, so right now I'm gonna just do damage to buy ourselves some time. Gonna break, we take 3 damage, but it's okay, we're not losing. Not even remotely losing, actually. Uh, now we play this here, and this will literally die in one hit. Almost made a mistake and lost the game. We will also play this here to start amassing some bones. Now they will do nothing. He will try to play another one of those there. Um, I mean, you should break it, but right now I cannot, so we're about to take the damage. We're still barely alive. And uh, can I break it? Yes, I was lucky, so now I can break it. And now he can no longer do anything. So now the only thing I have to obviously do is wait. Wait. Obviously do not play this. Because if I play this, it will start spawning bones. And those bones will start destroying my units. Let's play flyer. Obviously. Okay, now we play the two of those. We play a flyer. By the way, you don't need to play a flyer in particular. Um, actually, you know what? Let's start rushing him down. That was almost a mistake. Uh, you sack this. Let's start rushing him down. Now that I have an army. Yeah, I'm playing these just to showcase that you don't need to have flyers. And I killed him even before I had time to get money. But it's okay, once again. We don't care about this at all. We pick those cards up, which we also don't care about. We go off to the left. There is a chest there for a card, for a, and then another chest here for a pack. But uh, you don't need these, you don't need any of this. You just needed to beat that guy, which is the easiest fight in the game, I think. Because as you saw, you just destroy one enemy card, that this is your one and it's over. And now we just have arrived to the farm spot. So this is literally the farm spot, and I even got a card... Um, I even got a hand that is gonna showcase, by the way I made a mistake, well it doesn't matter, I'm also gonna showcase here how you farm, you just attack on the right, tada, farm get complete, that's what you do, you just stay here and farm, I got 2 coins, 3 coins, I could have gotten 5 or 6 if I played this better, but uh, you will start out by first amassing some money, so let me show you this once more, maybe with a different hand, well, we didn't get a different hand, so this is exactly what I actually want to get. The, the wolf cub, pretty much. Play the wolf cub here, now it will do 1 damage. Next turn it will do, full da do, do 4 damage, so I should pass. And uh, now I should do as much damage as possible, which is just this. And I got plus 3 coins. Very nice. And that broke. Okay, and now what you should do is now that I got some money, first I should go and see if I have... How many cats do I have? That's the most important part. I have one cat. Okay, one cat is not enough, but I'm gonna show it with one cat. 
Actually, you know what? Let me get one more coin because there is a chance that I'm lucky. Let me let me do one more run on that. There is a chance that I'm lucky and uh, the luck has to do with what is happening in the shop. But uh, we will see. We pass. Actually, we reroll. That's why we have this thing. We didn't get good stuff. So we pass, we pass, we pass. Enemy doesn't do anything. We got our combo here. So we play this and this. This will do one this turn and the next turn another three. So we pass. Now we will play the bird to get even more money. And that's it pretty much with farming right now. For money at least. So now we are at 14 coins. And that is definitely more than enough. So now we will go off to actually jump down, go back to Leshy's shop. And now the meme, the dream, the god, the everything that everybody is talking about on the Discord is going to come into play. And so for everybody that is in the Discord, you guys know what I'm talking about. We will buy Ouroboros, the Dragon God of Victory. Okay, that costs always 8 and is always in this slot, so uh, you should buy this, obviously it's broken. And then you have 6 more, I have 6 more, you want to buy from this slot. This slot has always the th same new 3 cards, it has Squirrel Ball, it has the cat that we care about, and it has Field Mice. I will buy the Field Mice just to showcase that if you buy the slot again, it will go back to Squirrel Ball, and behind Squirrel Ball is going to be another uh, cat. So in case you don't have a cat already, you just should do that again and again. Uh, but you don't need two cats for what I'm about to show. You can also do it with one cat. But uh, you don't even need any cat at all. But the cat is going to make it extremely faster than without having a cat. Now, we obviously don't go to that fight without the cats and Uroboros. Uh, we will also not throw anything away from the deck because we don't need to. And uh, if anything, having more cards might be even more useful. And uh, now the real farm begins. When I say real farm begins, uh, I mean that you just have to spam space. And when I say real farm, I mean like this, this, this will take you about, I don't know, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 3 minutes. It's not like a hearthstone farming or something. So now that we draw a bunch of cards, actually we can draw even more here. We can go down to zero cards and uh, then we will play all our turn in one turn. So we go zero the cards and now we begin. First of all, we play this. Second thing, we play another one. I mean, why not? We play cut one, boop. We play cut two, boop. And now we start playing Roboros. So how that should look like is we sacrifice the two cats, play Roboros, and uh, then we break Roboros. As simple as that. So to get out more out of your cats, because the cats have... Um, first of all, when you when Ouroboros dies, it gets plus one, plus one permanently for this mode and for the next mode. So for act two and for act three, Ouroboros is going to get buffed forever. Even if you die, even if whatever happens, Robo is gonna get buffed. And uh, now you should start throwing stuff into the bin. You don't need to sacrifice all the time the cats, because the cats don't have infinite lives. They have nine lives. And uh, also, if you have blood units, you should sacrifice him them instead of uh, playing Ouroboros, instead of breaking Ouroboros with a hammer. But still, you can, um, as I said, first of all, sacrifice Ouroboros again. Let me show you exactly what this looks like. So this cat right now is uh, losing lives slowly. Sacrifice Ouroboros. Sacrifice these two, sacrifice Roboros, sacrifice these two, again and again and again. I, I don't have any other way to sacrifice Roboros, so now I start breaking him. Let's also play these just to be a smidge faster. Okay, break Roboros again. Do this. Play this too. Sack Roboros. Play this. Come on. Up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. At some point, yeah, now this cat has lost all its lives. So now this cat is going to die when I sacrifice it. Okay, we continue. So break Roboros. I could sacrifice it for the flyer, but that is going to eat one of the lives of the cat away. So it's almost the same thing. I mean, if you want to min-max or calculate stuff, you can do it, but it really doesn't matter. Uh, this thing is going to happen again and again and again and again. And uh, let's, uh, I'm not gonna do it a thousand times, I'm just gonna do it for this one time, just to showcase what it looks like, you know, there is no reason for me to do it a thousand times, but you can see that this thing goes up really quick. Does this look like something that will take a year? No. You can, this is already too much, I mean, nobody's surviving 15 damage, and uh, nobody's killing it with 15 life, but um, I, will su I would suggest to you to actually get it up to, uh, let's say, 30-30, um, because of the fact that that unit which I just killed 
has the ability to do to do to do 10 damage to all to everything adjacent and above it so in act three there is like a skill that explodes and uh, another skill an active item that uh, you can play and everything fills with bombs and uh, that thing will fill everything around Ouroboros with bombs and bombs will start doing 10 10 10 to him so if Ouroboros is like a 35 35 or 40 40 then he will not take anything so he will be take 10 take 10 10 10 and he will stay with 35 attack and uh, i guess five life or whatever but at that point you will insta kill the enemy and then you hit here and uh, you will really quickly realize that look how much money i get with one time now now you might say yo i'm not gonna do this again and again and again and again and again and again just to get 12 coins yeah you're not gonna do this again and again you're gonna do it two times now what you're gonna do you're gonna do it three three or four times okay i'm not gonna showcase here i uh, me doing this like a thousand times because it's going to be the same thing again and again uh let's pass a few turns you see just to draw some cards as i said before the only thing you have to draw really is the two ca ca cats the reason I'm drawing all the deck is to have more sacrifices because uh, the moment you play Ouroboros it's going to instantly kill the enemy. But uh, what I want to showcase here is that as you see Ouroboros is actually 1717 still. So you can continue doing this again and again and again and again and again and again until you have a uh, Ouroboros 40 40 50 50 100 100 it doesn't matter man. I I would suggest you to stop at 40 40 but you can do whatever you want and then you just ding it. Come over here ding it again 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 and gather a bunch of money and uh, then you will have like a bunch of money and uh, when you will have um, let's say 100 let's say 80 100 might sound too much but don't forget that if if you do this normally it will take you like five minutes to get the rewards to a 50 50 and then you can just attack him twice and be done you will instantly get 100 coins okay so uh actually uh, let me let me off screen farm up a bit and uh, farm a bit of money and then i will continue from uh, for the next part to create the super uber mega insta win deck and at that point the guide will be over so give me just this mitch okay and here i am with 142 coins and at this point let me look what the farm well let me show you what the farm looks like so at this point i have powered up Ouroboros at a point where he has a nice amount of stats come on Ouroboros where are you join me my brother here he is here's Ouroboros with the night with his stats and at this point you're not even farming Ouroboros you just do this boop boop bop pass and that's it you win instantly you know um this is not the mega build this is not the the deck I just wanted to show you how fast you gain money after some point after you bring Ouroboros at, at the number, you don't need to farm him anymore. You just get the money and that's it pretty much. So uh, now let me show you how to actually create the most broken deck in this game. So go over here, talk to this dude. This is the mage seller and you buy this slot. Particularly the blue mage, you want about 10 blue mages in your deck. So you just spam and count blue mages. That would be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's go higher. 12, 11, 12, 13, 14. And you need like 7 or 6 of those sapphire marks. So let's, let's say 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Those are always in this slot and this slot respectively. So you just want these and these that's it pretty much that's it the deck is literally those so now you throw everything out other than Ouroboros obviously and you go over here and uh, use the units I just told you so you go with let's say 10 11 12 and uh, let's go with seven of those seven and twelve that's the deck mm, maybe seven is a bit too much let's go down to six uh, six and ten this this is okay and you know what because you maybe you might be like no only Ouroboros what are we talking about man that's not a good idea you can you can bring in whatever you want you can literally play whatever you want it doesn't matter I'm only playing with Ouroboros um you should not be able to lose Ouroboros somehow but because uh, to play blue mages you actually need to have sapphire marks you will uh, you can play up to units that have three sacrifice as a cost Obviously, you can also play in bone units or this thing. You can play whatever you want. It doesn't matter. But uh, I want to showcase the deck here. I, I would suggest if you try to play this deck, you should not have... Uh, you should have up to maybe two or three more units other than Urboro. So, for example, something like this. Okay? Uh, do not have like a thousand other units because then you will... Uh, 
muddy up the deck and there is a chance that it will not be broken anymore but let me show you what the fight with this deck looks like looks like i'm not gonna go into a real fight because what i'm gonna show you here is literally the same thing as in a real fight it really is exactly the same thing you cannot lose Okay, for example, this is a perfect hand, so I'm not gonna play it because this is like a win, but let, let me show you what it looks like when you have the perfect hand. You play one, two, three, and then boop, this thing draws you three cards. Guess what? You break it, you draw another three cards. Mm -hmm. Oh, we draw Roboros. You can do this, break this, play this, and actually, let me let me sh first show you what it looks like in the real game. This is like uh, what it looks like normally. You do this, you do this. You do this, and at this point I have drawn all my deck, so I do this, and this, place Roboros and win. As simple as that. You don't have to do anything else. And uh, as you realize, you can do this with anything that you want, anything that you want you can do this thing with, because the only thing you need is the blue mages and the circle to play them. And uh, you can literally not break your hand. Let me show you what it looks like if you try to work your hand. This is a perfect hand, this is a win again. You will be drawing two cards for every blue mage you play. Reroll. Still not bricked. The only way you can brick your hand is if you draw four of those or four of the blue mages. And then you still have a reroll to try to fix your brick hand, bricked hand. So I don't I, I have never seen that happen. I have never ever seen this uh, this thing this thing brick and completely not work. You see, this is not brick, this is a win. This is a win again. Even if you only have one of those, boop, you draw one card. Boop, you draw one card. What are you gonna draw? You, it, it, the, the chances are two. You either are gonna draw another blue mage, or you're gonna draw another one of those. And if you go draw another one of those, you first play them, and then you continue drawing cards. And now it's even better. Look at this. Now I powered up. Now it's over. N now we won. You see, as simple as that. So it's really, it's really easy. This is literally the Exodia deck one shot. So I know that this guy does not attack, but you have to realize that. No matter what the enemy is, he will have one open slot somewhere, and then you just do this, and boom, and you win. And uh, as simple as that. And the bosses, they're not gonna survive, because because of the fact that Ouroboros comes back to your hand. So if the bosses do something crazy, you will still get Ouroboros back, and you will win. Even this mage here uh, changes the... I mean, what do the bosses do? This mage changes the abilities of your cards when you draw them, and also of Uroboros, but do you care? Obviously not, because Uroboros is a 69-69. Even, even if he doesn't have an ability, as long as the enemy doesn't have poison, you are winning. So, this boss doesn't have poison. You play Uroboros, you win. And also, one of the abilities he, he paints stuff with is the ability of the blue mage, so he might even give you the ability that you want to draw cards. So, uh, this boss is a joke. This boss here... Uh, brings everything around uh, you just place your boss at the very right and uh, you win instantly and even after that he copies cards and places him on his board you still win i have done it time and time again you will win this boss too and this boss i mean he will kill you she will kill your boros it will come back to hand and then you play your hand and just win the next turn so overall it's uh, everything can be beaten as i said this boss here you might think oh no he's gonna copy my 69 69 Ouroboros and gonna play four of them yeah but the very next turn first of all when you pass uh your Ouroboros kills the enemy Ouroboros, and both of those that die get to your hand because that's how it's coded. And you get two Ouroboros when you kill his Ouroboros. So the only thing you have to do is to have blockers for when he attacks. And then the next turn you play your two Ouroboros and then you win. Because you kill two again and then you draw a bunch more and uh, and then it's over. So this boss is like a joke. She does not do anything because Ouroboros gets revived to your hand. He does not do anything because he cannot deal with the 69-69. So overall everything is beat. Nobody can counter you. And every time you play everything dies instantly. So that's pretty much the Exodia deck. How to get it. How to beat everything and uh, I hope this was helpful because as I said a lot of people uh, got um, got tired of this area maybe it's a bit slow I don't know what if you do what I did um, I mean the video is like 30 minutes but um, yeah so let's let's say it will take you 35 minutes so within 35 minutes you will have an Exodia deck and then it will take you what another 20 to just beat everything and blast through this thing so use it as you will i hope you guys liked the video if you did maybe drop a like helping out the channel if you want to tell me anything if you agree or disagree with what i did if you're like no that's cheating i don't know 
then uh, go ahead and comment that below. Again, I don't know, I'm, I'm reading all of the comments, but right now there is an influx of them, so I'm being a bit slow in reading them because they're coming, so many are coming in, but still I'm reading every single comment, so say what you want. Also, if you want to talk to me directly or have a higher chance to for me to read what you are saying, just come over to the Discord because I'm reading every single thing in the Discord for sure. There is also a bunch of discussions happening, especially around Ouroboros, which people love and uh, love, so if you like Ouroboros too, then come over there and I guess worship him or whatever and uh, yeah let's not forget by the way that you will have this Ouroboros in Act 3 so this thing is gonna help you too for Act 3 and uh, yeah that's it pretty much so yeah that's it thanks for watching see you guys around